The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, to set the downtrodden free. Words taken from St. Luke's Gospel, Chapter 4. Verse 18 My dear sisters and brothers in Christ Mercy, mercy, mercy Now you sound like a chosen people An anointed people Amen, Amen. In my homily for the Mass of Chrism this year, I wish to reverse the order in which I usually share with you. Instead of addressing the priests last, this year I am going to address my brother priests first, and I invite you to listen. The main features of the Mass of Chrism is the blessing of the oils and the renewal of priestly promises. Among us, we have a visiting priest from Peru, Father Edgar. Father Edgar, would you stand so we could welcome you among the clergy here today? And we also have a, new pre a relatively new priest with us from Kenya, Father David. Father David. And one is coming to go, and the other has come to stay with us for a while, for one year. My homily is divided into three parts. My dear brother priests, in this year of mercy, I call you priests of mercy. Luke 4 18 outlines Jesus' mission of mercy. I encourage you to make this text your own and let it also outline your mission of mercy as priests of mercy. Sometimes as priests we are tempted to have our own agendas, resist the temptation. Let your agenda be to care for your people. In Mark 10:45, we read, For the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. For all time, this will be the core of our job description as priests. I therefore encourage you again to make your own the mission statement of Jesus in Luke 4.18.
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the poor. As priests of mercy, I encourage you to build communion with your bishop, with your brother priests, with your brother deacons, with the religious and all the people of God in this archdiocese. To strengthen your brothers in the fraternity of priests and deacons and I also remind you and ask you to remember that only a priest in love with the Lord can renew a parish. Did I hear amen? amen. You are wonderful priests. Each of you has his own gifts and desire to serve the Lord. However, we cannot live in isolation. We are meant to live in communion and fellowship with one another. Even wonderful priests and wonderful bishops need healthy friendships and care. Never cease praying for the grace to trust God and to trust each other. Without trust, we will not expose ourselves to healing and mercy. Ministry requires trust, good and respectful communication, great kindness and sensitivity, and a big dose of humility. As priests of mercy, open doors of mercy. Don't close them. In this year of mercy, Resist the love of money and power. Be humble and generous in your service to others. Be good confessors and men of mercy. This year, I would like us to focus on the works of mercy in our ministry of mercy pope francis reminds us that it is jesus who introduces us to the works of mercy in his preaching so that we can know whether or not we are living as his disciples. Church, how many works of mercy are there? Fourteen. Seven corporal and seven spiritual. Do you know what the corporal works of mercy are? Do you know what the spiritual works of mercy are? The Pope wants us to rediscover the works of mercy. Our Holy Father has said that he has a burning desire that during this Jubilee, the Christian people may reflect on the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. It will be a way to reawaken our conscience, 
too often grown dull in the face of poverty. And you could find those words in the Bull of Indiction, number 15. Easy to Google, easy to find. The Pope's letter for the Jubilee year of mercy is also called the Bull of Indiction. And you can get it on, but if I told you, you won't read my book, my pastoral letter anymore. Hmm? You will get it in www.im.va. Very easy. www.im.va. And the I-M simply means jubileum misericordiae. Jubileum, Jubilee of Mercy, I am, and VA is Vatican, short for Vatican. Go there. And if you can't remember it, go to vatican.org, and you will get it there too. Just put in what you want. And if you can't get it, ask your priest, or call CTBS, or one of the convents and they will tell you. It is also, the Pope spoke about his burning desire. It is also my burning desire that in the Archdiocese of Castries, all Catholic Christians will know what the corporal and spiritual works of mercy are and that they will enjoy practicing, you will enjoy practicing your faith by being people of mercy, doing the works of mercy. Following the example of Jesus, by introducing your people to the works of mercy, I'm addressing the priests now, Brothers, follow the example of Jesus by introducing your people to the works of mercy in your homilies, in your teachings, in every opportunity you get this year. We started our school visitations just over a week ago. And we, we visited four schools, and in all the schools, we are charting a course of mercy. And I shared with the children, and I learned a song that the school in Ancelare, the infant school, sings about mercy. And I asked, have asked Raymond Joseph to make sure that all the schools, Catholic schools in the Archdiocese will get that song. And I heard Cicerone is also singing a similar song. If it could have been the same song about mercy. And it's a beautiful song. It's upbeat and good for the young people. So all parish schools, all, all Catholic schools, get that song. Sing it this year with the children. Teach the schools. If we teach our children early, then they will have the faith later on. If we deny them proper catechesis now, later on, they will not know their faith. And they won't have anything to build on. This is a good year for introducing our children to mercy and teaching them how to be merciful. Work with your, I'm with my priests, work with your youth groups, catechetical programs, your Catholic schools, and church organization to pass on the teaching, understanding, and practical experience of doing works of mercy. 
do not shy away from the spiritual works of mercy. People have physical needs, but they also have spiritual needs. Am I right, people of God? Take as your example the need to pray for the living and the dead. The seventh spiritual work of mercy. This is a great Christian responsibility. There are many people in need of prayer support today. Not just the people we know. In the face of all the violence, hunger, poverty, illiteracy, and human suffering in the world, the church must be a praying church. And we must be praying Catholic Christians in solidarity with and constantly praying for our brothers and sisters. Every day, there are so many people being killed in road accidents, wars, acts of terrorism, in all kinds of human conflict, as well as those who die from diseases and hunger. We cannot afford to fail in our responsibility to pray for the living and the deceased, the dead. Our children must be taught from young to pray for the needs of their sisters and brothers all over the world, living and dead. Our youth must not be allowed to become complacent in matters of prayer and service to others. There was a time when Catholics used to have masses celebrated for the souls in purgatory. What has happened to that good practice? What about masses for peace in a world of conflict and war and terrorism? What about masses for an end to war and violence? What about masses for the respect and protection of life, human life, from womb to tomb? <coughs> to know, experience, and do works of mercy requires good catechesis, teaching, pastoral motivation, and example. In Deus Caritas Est, the encyclical letter of Pope Benedict XVI, the Pope says that love, caritas, will always prove necessary even in the most just society. There will always be suffering which cries out for consolation and help. There will always be loneliness. There will always be situations of material need where help in the form of concrete love of neighbor is indispensable. Deus Caritases, God is love, number 28 my brothers, that you read the book entitled The Corporal and Spiritual Works of Mercy, which is one of the pastoral resources for living the Jubilee from the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of the New Evangelization. That work analyzes 
four kinds of poverty that correspond to the works of mercy physical or economic poverty cultural poverty social and relational poverty and spiritual poverty it is important to have a comprehensive approach to the works of mercy that takes into account the different dimensions of poverty. When I was a young priest, I was mentored by an Irish Dominican priest who supported the work of the St. Vincent de Paul in the parish where I was assigned with him in Trinidad. And he visited the poor and the shut-ins and never missed an opportunity in his preaching to mention the little people and the need to care for the least among us. I learned from his example how to love and serve the poor. The people in the parish where we worked had a great respect and affection for him and they christened him Matthew 25. My Dominican confrere Matthew 25 influenced me greatly in keeping my eyes open to the needs of others and he taught me how to forget about myself when it came to serving the poor he taught me how to see Christ in the least of my brothers and sisters he didn't sing much I don't want to tell you he couldn't sing but his road march tune was whatsoever you do could you finish the sentence amen he would say over and over again in his homilies in the end all we can take with us is love Matthew 25 was clearly one of the priests I knew and had the privilege to work with who was merciful like the Father in his care for others, especially the least among us. By their fruits you shall know them. In conclusion, I wish to remind you of three recommendations I made in my pastoral letter for the Jubilee Year of Mercy. Church, have you seen the bishop's pastoral letter? All you need is fifteen dollars and you have good sound spiritual reading in your hands you have a lovely synopsis of the jubilee year and how we can enter into this year as disciples and missionaries and become missionaries of mercy on mission all parishes have books, have the, let, the pastoral letter. In fact, we had, we published 500 and we had to print another 200 because Soufrier got 32 and they ordered 50 more. And I was going to Grenada and I was invited to bring 50 copies to Grenada as well. And you know what? They gave me, the, I had to give away 10 of the 50, but they gave me money for 40 
to come back with. They sold them out on the weekend that I was there. I am not sending a message to my brother priests. They know something good when they have it in their hands and they know what to do with it because it is for you it was written. It was not written just for us, the clergy. It was written for the church in St. Lucia to build you up in the faith, to instruct you and inspire you. And I would like to think that you will not think twice to purchase one of these pastoral letters. It will be for your benefit. You think I'm a good salesman? Amen. Amen. So we are in conclusion. And on page 29 of the pastoral letter, this is one of the recommendations, two of the recommendations that I made, that we plan an archdiocesan mercy concert before the end of the year of mercy. That home visitation should be intensified as part of an evangelization outreach to ensure that the sick, the homebound, and families in the parishes are known and cared for and that the priests and deacons in parishes are part of this evangelization outreach. And the third recommendation is on page 31, that there be an intense week of mercy, works of mercy in all parishes this year. And you could choose your week, but that each parish would have an intense week of works of mercy in the parish. Priests of mercy, my brothers, the time has come to have mercy. The moment is here. In this year of mercy, let the misery and the sorrow of others touch and pierce your hearts and be merciful like the Father. May our Blessed Mother Mary, Mother of Priests and Mother of Mercy and all the saints of mercy intercede for us. Mercy, mercy, mercy! To God be the glory. When I was slender, you shed in my pain. When I was ill-treated, you 